Hello, Facebook family. Oh, we're we'll getting ready to start with In the Blender with uh, your host, Madeline and Brandon Hyman. And we're just going to wait about another minute uh, as everybody log in. Uh, we got some exciting news to share, uh, some exciting information to go over with you guys on tonight. And so we're just giving uh, one more minute and we'll be starting. Hey, Freddie, what's going on? All right. We got about 30 more seconds and we'll be starting. Hey, Matt. Hey, Freddie. Well, we want to welcome you to In the Blender with Brandon and Marilyn Hyman. And we're so excited about this broadcast uh, in the blender, sharing our private, our personal testimony uh, with you all and uh, some helpful hints and nuggets on how to navigate the blended family. And I tell you, you're just going to be so excited on uh, this evening for information that we're going to be sharing. And I tell you, it's just been so awesome. The responses that we've been receiving over the last two weeks has just been phenomenal. Uh, people across the country have been just hitting us up, uh, telling us how much they've been enjoying the broadcast, as well as, you know, different questions and things they wanted some clarity on. And so we're just going to give you a, a, just a brief recap uh, on last week's broadcast, uh, the information that we shared. Uh, we both come from a, a different family dynamic. Uh, my parents been married 44 years uh, be 45 years this year. Uh, my wife, her family uh, has had a, a couple of different dynamics as far as those go. And I tell you, we've just been learning and over the years we've learned how to navigate those things because uh, as we shared on last week, we talked about systems a little bit. And that's something our man of God, Dr. Mike Freeman, has been sharing um, about systems. And we talked about those systems and how uh, we both had two separate systems uh, that we came together with and there was my wife's system of doing things and then there was my way, my system of doing things. And so we saw that there was really a conflict in systems because neither one of us wanted to back down to our systems. And not so much back down, but we were so set in the way we did things right. that it opposed a lot of problems early on. You want to talk a little bit about that? And basically because we were both doing our own system for quite some time. Um, like I, it had just been me and my girls for about eight years before I met you. So my system was set with me and my girls, the way we was, would do things. And then when you came in, you know, you wanted to bring in your system and just wipe mine away. So, you know, I was like, in the beginning, I, you know, wasn't going to have that. And I didn't know how to um, just let your system like just overrule my system and we were kind of back and forth on okay whose system we going to go with <laughs> and, and you know that the the crazy thing was or, or, the, or the sad thing was there was nothing in place to assist us or and to uh teach us and to mentor us right. on how to bring both systems together right. and, and with a compromise in order to grow and to mature and to to get the, the things that we really wanted to get out of this marriage. And so we just began to really seek the face of God and really begin to pray and fast and consecrate ourselves and really let Holy Spirit have his way. And I tell you, that's one of the things we want to share even on tonight, uh, especially with a lot of blended families. There has to be communication. There has to be prayer. There has to be some fasting. There has to be some some giving of yourselves because like the, like the word says, not my will, but your will be done. And so we have to learn how to come underneath each other. The Bible tells us the husbands to, to submit ourselves unto our wives, even as our wives submit our, submit themselves unto us. And so those were some of the things we had to learn early on. And I tell you, when we learned those things, it just, just gave us so much power in our marriage, gave us so much power in our relationship. And so uh, we're going to talk a little bit about some statistics. Uh, last week we shared that 40% of married couples with children from blended families. Form a blended family. Forty percent of married couples with children form a blended family. Right. 
Not only that, at least one parent has a child or children from a previous marriage or relationship. Correct. One of the other stats that we shared is there's 1 million, 100 million Americans that have blended families. And that's huge. And especially in the body of Christ, we find out that so yeah. many people are blended in the body of Christ. And one thing that we struggled with early on was that even though there's a large amount of us that have blended families, there's really not a lot that's there to really minister to us yeah. and really to encourage us and show us how to navigate bringing one system with another system and how to develop a whole other system out of two. Right. There's not a lot of things that tell you how to deal with baby mama drama and baby daddy drama. Right. Not a lot of things that tell you how to build, how to bring in finances from other different relationships because now when you talk about finance with a blended family, a lot of times you're talking about child support. And see, when you already just have that one husband and that one wife, child support is an issue for most. And so now you have, there's a dynamic that you're dealing with where now, how do we deal with this child support thing? Because he's only making a certain amount of money or she's only making a, right. making a certain amount of money. And now a portion of that is even leaving the household. Correct. So how do we handle that? And I tell you, it's just been phenomenal how we've learned how to grow in those areas and how God has given us wisdom concerning those things. And I tell you, it's just been phenomenal. Also, last week, we talked about a lot of dudes. And so some of the, one, a couple of the dudes are finding an effective way to get to know the children or the child. One of the things that we had to learn was, or that I had to learn was, how to get to know my daughters. Um, here I am, I'm, I'm a young man, I'm coming into a system with my own way or my own system of doing things, and I really didn't want to get to know them. I really didn't want to get to know how they felt about things, what they thought about things, uh, their view of things, or, or what they can bring to the table. All I wanted was my system, my way of doing things, and that was that. And so I had to learn the hard way. And so it's my, it's my heart's desire that you not learn the hard way. And so that's one of the things we want to encourage that if you are a blended family and you want to be effective in this blended family, Find ways to get to know the child or the children. Right. Correct. Well, what you got to say about yeah, that? I mean, you, you basically said it um, because during that process, it was a lot of hurt, a lot of pain, a lot of disappointment, um, you know, that happened throughout that process of not wanting to um, get to know them. Um, they wanted to actually, in the beginning, I can probably say they didn't really want to get to know you either. Because they felt like you were coming in and you were taking, you know, me away from them. So mm -hmm. they didn't want to get to know you and you really didn't want to get to know them. So we just had to learn how to just put it all together and make it work. And so it's important to find effective ways to get to know the child or the children. Secondly, find out the child's perspective or the children's perspective as relates to the relationship and what's to come. It's so important because not only did I interrupt their flow, but then I was also, in a sense, replacing what they already knew. And then that's why it was important for me to get to develop a relationship with their father, their natural father, because I was interrupting a lot of things. And so, yes, go ahead. Yeah, because no, that was one of the things that we missed off on last week. We had that as one of the do's. Um, to meet the other parent, you know, get to get to know them, so that that he, because with that he gave you a lot of leeway, you know, and a lot of um, how do I want to say like freedom to be able to uh, deal with the girls however you felt fit to deal with them since they were under your roof. And that's important because when you're dealing with a blended family, you want to make sure that all parties are on the same playing field. You want to make sure that there's no misunderstanding as it relates to uh, rearing, as it relates to discipline, mm -hmm. as it relates to how we're going to set this system up. Mm -hmm. Because you don't want in your house there's a certain set of rules, and then when they leave your home, there's mm -hmm. another set of rules. Right. And so you got to make sure that everybody is on the same playing field, that there's an understanding that this is what we tolerate and this is what we expect. And then also get what they tolerate and what they right. expect. Correct. So now you can come, you can have some type of commonality so that there's not a whole bunch of things going on as it relates to 
how we get, how we rearing the children, how we right. we disciplining them, how we teaching them. Right. And so I'm, I'm glad you brought that up. And, and hit that one more time. Right. Getting to know. Oh yeah, getting. It's important that you get to know the the other parent of of the child or the children. And and that's important because we we had to deal with it on two separate pl on playing fields because right. with the girls. Their father was eager to get to know me. Right. He was eager to get to, to know what I believed in and right. what I stood for and, and my plan of action as for related the, to his daughters. Exactly. But on my son's standpoint, it, it wasn't was, the it same was thing. Right. You know, and so we, we had to learn how to navigate that because that. That, we'll talk about that in another episode. Yes. That was a whole... That, that's, that's a whole a, 30 minutes within by itself. itself. By itself. So, <laughs> so we, we're, gonna, we're, we're not going to really talk right about there. that one. So we're going to leave um, that one alone. But I tell you, it's so awesome. Also, two points we are. Uh, no, I was just going to go to the next couple of um, points we um, had down to allow time for adjustment, allow time for a change and compromise. And you said earlier, always keep the lines of communication open because all of those are important. And those are just some of the do's, you know. Exactly. And like she said, the first one was, Allow time for adjustment. Understand this. When you have a blended family, when you bring in a blended family together, there's going to be a lot of adjustments. There's going to be years of adjustment. Actually, we're still making adjustments 20 years later. And they're and so, grown. And they're grown. We're talking about, give, give the ages. Uh, 30. The youngest is 30. The middle is 33. The oldest girl is 36. And... Anthony, he is 21. 20, yeah, 21. And so, so there's a, there, are, there are adjustments that have to take place. And so you have to allow time for those adjustments because, again, you're talking about wheels. Mm -hmm. And one of the things you have to understand that is this. If God don't control our wheels, then what make you think you can control another man's wheel? And so you have to allow time for adjustment so that we can come together, we can build a bond, we can build trust we can build communication so that as we make adjustments, there's not a lot of hiccups. Yeah, and then in the beginning, it was the tough ages because your son was two or our son was two, and then the girls were 10, 13, and 16. So everybody had all types of different stuff going on, you know, with them, with the growing ages and the teenage stuff, just all types of different yeah, issues that you even came into. So, because I, I, I came into teenage girls, and so you <laughs> yeah, know, it, it, it for, for years I couldn't even, I had to get up earlier to use the bathroom because I had a house full of women, and so that was an adjustment. You know, with different yeah, things we had to deal with, you know, yeah. which was funny to me because I'm like, I'm, I'm not used to that. You know, you got to you gotta now adjust the way you go to the restroom and, and you got to make sure you put the toilet seat down and you got to make sure you do a lot of things on your end to adjust to their flow. And so allow time for adjustment. Then also too allow time for change and compromise. Mm -hmm. And this is important because you're always changing. Always. There's always going to be compromise, whether you want to or not. There's always change. Even even in ministry, uh, we're in a year of change, and so which was so so awesome because if anybody know about change, we know about change, yeah. and so you have to allow time for change, and sometimes change hurts. Sometimes change isn't pleasant. Sometimes change can feel like a letdown or a disappointment, but ultimately change brings healing. Change brings yeah. deliverance. Yeah. Change brings breakthrough. So you have to allow time for change. And then the last one we had uh, was always keep the lines of communication open. And, and that's really not a whole lot to say about that. It's just always just making sure that you're always available um, to talk, always wanting to talk, always uh, allowing, well, letting the children know that you know, you're there when they need to talk because you want them to talk to you. You don't want them to go talk to everybody else about what they're feeling and, um, you know, in the home. Mm -hmm. um, that's why we had said even earlier in our first broadcast that, that we'll, it'll be times where we'll be bringing um, the children on so that they can give, you know, their perspective on what they had to deal with because with blended families, every person has something that they have to go through or deal with in it. You know, each person has to change. Each person has to adjust. 
each person had hurt, each person had pain. And it's just important that, you know, everybody is able to be able to come to their parents. You want them to be able to come to you and talk to you about, you know, whatever they're feeling and not get upset about it, you know, but be open to receive what they have to say. And, and let me say this. The, one, of the, one of the mistakes that I made early on was I wasn't a good communicator. Um, in the sense of, mm -hmm. I really didn't really mm -hmm. want to hear what they had to say because mm -hmm. I was the adult, mm -hmm. I was the parent. And so this is the way it's going to be. It's my way or the highway. We, there's no compromise to it. Uh, we're not going to have a long, drawn on conversation. Because I grew up in a home where I, I didn't have a conversation with my father. It was pretty much like, this is what I want done and this is what you're going to do if you want to stay under my roof. I go to work, I bring home the bacon, and, and, and your mama, she cook it, and she cook it up in the frying pan, and, and you eat it. And, and, and you won't like what you eat and you better not give me no lip about how it's cooked. And so that was the type of mentality that I came into this thing because it was like, it was no communication for me. Um, it was no, well, well, we feel like this. Well, I, I really didn't care about how you felt. And we've learned, we've learned that that's the mentality of a lot of people when they come into a blended family is there's no real wanting to understand. There's no really wanting to compromise. There's no really wanting to get to know what each other feel and how we can make this thing better. It's always this one way of doing things. And so communication is key. I mean, now me and my daughters and me and my son, I mean, we, we could talk countless hours at a yeah. time. I mean, like, it's like there's not one that I can't have a six hour conversation with. And, you know, and which is so powerful you because you can go from. A, a, a five minute conversation to now a six hour conversation that's big yeah because now it's like they'll talk to you before they talk to me <laughs> well that, that that's a whole, that's, that's a whole nother broadcast <laughs> too, so we're not gonna really talk about why that is but that's a whole nother broadcast but uh no i mean we we love it you know what i'm saying it's just awesome that the lines of communication yeah. are open they're there um each one of them they'll call me and you know, certain things they're dealing with, certain decisions that they have to make, and, and they just want a little insight, a little wisdom, you know, or, or listening ear, uh, just to kind of like uh, vent sometimes, and, you know, just, just to be there for them. And so make sure that you keep those lines of communication open. But we want to talk a little bit about some of the don'ts, because last time we didn't touch any of the don'ts last time, so any of the don'ts. And so uh, don't bring old expectations into the new relationship. Yeah, you explain that one. You talk about that. <laughs> Don't bring old expectations into the new relationship. And this is very important because you're talking about ways of doing things. A lot of times, especially with blended families, you're coming, you're coming in from a relationship. You're coming there from a set system of how you were relating to an individual. And now you want to bring that same system into this new system. Guess what? She isn't the woman that you that you used to be married to or that you were dating. He isn't the man that you used to be married to or that you were dating. And so you have to understand that you can't bring those expectations. She might don't cook the way that that woman used to cook. And he might don't do the things that that man used to do. And so if you bring those expectations into this relationship, you already doomed for failure. You already doomed for a hard time. So this is like what I think should be like at the head of the don'ts is don't bring old expectations into this new relationship. The second one is don't talk bad about the biological parent. Now this one right here is like the greatest um, five star individual as it relates to number two. In 20 years, I haven't heard her down talk their, their natural father one time. There's some things that he's done that she don't agree with, that she's not in participation with, that she just don't like. But as far as bad mouthing him, never. And, and it helped me because it made me posture and made me position myself that I was going to be the same way. And, and my wife, she comes from a big family. Uh, they bought they bought 42 deep. <laughs> like she got like 20 brothers and 30 <laughs> sisters. And so like, you know. Stop talking about my family. <laughs> <laughs> but all of them can tell you she never ever, ever bad mouth uh their natural dad. And so uh, that's one thing I love mm -hmm. and appreciate, you know what I'm saying? Her 
not just to them, but but period. I mean, it's just something that she just would not do. And so that's that that is important. Never let that child hear you or even see you put your mouth on that parent. Never do that because uh, one thing that we've learned in this ministry is more is caught than taught. Yeah. And so what happens is if you don't respect that individual, then you yeah. can't expect them to respect that individual. Let me right. say that again. Right. If you're bad mouthing that, that other parent and if you're down talking that other parent, whether it's in the child's presence, it's to the child, or even when you think the child isn't listening, then what you're doing is you're already setting up the way that they're going to communicate with that child and ultimately how they're going to communicate with you. And so yeah. it's important to make sure that you don't even lend that type of, of ammunition to the enemy to bring that type of division in that relationship. Another one is don't come into the marriage and want to be the disciplinarian. That was my problem. Yes, Lord. <laughs> and I'm, I'm going to tell you, there's a price to pay. And we, we got a whole nother episode, a whole nother broadcast about that one because that was huge. That was a huge part of uh, early on in our marriage and in our relationship, you know what I'm saying, especially with the kids on trying to be that disciplinarian. Um, I, I really wasn't, I'm more of a vocal person. Um, I'm more like, you know, hey, this is the way I want it done. You know, that's that's how, you know, my discipline goes. But then there are times where, where you know, there's other types of discipline they discipline as well. And so you have to really seek the face of God as yeah. it relates to how you're going to institute discipline. Um, one thing that I, I, I appreciate was even that natural father was on board with some of my ways of discipline, but I still didn't have wisdom on yeah. how to how to institute it. Or how to bring it to pass. Let me say it like that. And so you want to make sure that you don't come in with this mind that you're going to be the disciplinary and you, this is the way it's going to be. And Because you, now you're going to cause some problems. Mm -hmm. And so make sure that your mind and your heart is set to love. The Bible says yeah. that love covers. And so if, if I would have came in more with the heart of love, then a lot of things that, that we as a family dealt with, we wouldn't have dealt with because my love would have covered a lot of the situations that we dealt with and it would have made a lot of things that we dealt with flow more smoothly. Uh, another one is, don't try to replace the biological permit. Yeah. Talk a little bit about that. Well, basically, you don't want to um, like come in and like in our case, uh, the father, you know, was was gone. Um, so you don't, you didn't want to come in and try to act like you are their father. Now their father no longer exists. Correct. You know that you're just coming in. You're totally taking his place. They're already making the adjustment of you coming in, feeling like they, like you know, you've taken their mother away. So they don't also need to come in and feel like you know that now you're trying to replace that other parent, whether it be the mother or the father. Exactly. So. And and that was one thing. That was one thing I was really good at. Um, I, I made it known from day one that I'm yeah. not here to take his place. I'm not here to uh, uh, supersede any any other relationship. As a matter of fact, I, I, I was so sad in this thing that when it was his time to get the girls, I would drive them and drop them off. And he didn't even have to come and get them. I would, I would personally, we would personally take them uh, where he lived, drop them off, and then personally pick them up and bring them back home. And so that was one of the great things that we set in stone yeah, as far as that goes because it was important to me that they have that relationship with him. Yeah. It was important to me that nothing, as far as that relationship was concerned, nothing stopped. Right. You know what I'm saying? Even when things didn't go according to plan or things didn't go according as how they liked, I still wanted to make sure that they knew I was never here to replace them. Right. You know what I'm saying? I was never here to... Uh, 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 move him out of the way. I was always here to assist him as it relates to them being the women that they were designed to be. And so uh, that's that's an awesome point. Also, um, don't try or don't treat the children differently, whether they're your biological or by marriage. Talk a little bit about that, too. Yeah, that right there is like very important because when when you marry 
and there's children prior to the marriage, mm-hmm. you don't want to treat the children different. You want to treat all of them the same because one thing that you that you said, which I really had to adjust to, is when you came in, you always said my daughters. Mm-hmm. Um, I started off by saying my stepson. Mm-hmm. Um, so that was an adjustment, you know, that I had to make. Um, not because there was like a problem or anything, but to me, that was, you know, my stepson. That's one thing that I really appreciated about she didn't you. didn't know anybody. <laughs> That's one thing I appreciated, you know, about you because you always made it known or whenever you talk to anyone, you always said, I have, you know, three daughters and you never treated, you know, well, your son actually at the time, see, your son at the time, you know, back then wasn't in the home. She still don't hush, know hush, 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 let me finish. You know, he wasn't in the home, so... We didn't really have to, um, you know, actually deal with that. But, Correct. you know, we've seen it. But you definitely don't want to treat the children different because they're not different. Once you get married, they're you, both of you all's children. So all the children should have the same treatment. Exactly. And, and, and it was so funny because people used to always say, you are the youngest looking father I've ever seen. And so she's a hater, don't that? That look right there, that's called hateration. <laughs> that's what that is. And so they would say, you are the youngest looking father. How in the world do you have grown daughters? And so that was because I was so passionate about, or I am so passionate about, they're my daughters. You know what I'm saying? Like I said mm-hmm. in the first broadcast, she's not my stepwife. So if she's not my stepwife, then why would I call them my stepdaughters? And so that's something that I really, oh, let, me, let me put yeah, a pin yeah, in that right yeah. there. Stop saying step. I don't know where that came from. I don't know where it was defined from, but when you become a family, you're a family. Even in the even in the household of faith, we're not yeah. stepchildren to God. We are His. Yes. We're heirs and joint heirs with Christ Jesus. And so, as God took us in and He made us as if we were His very own, then why do we now put stipulations or titles or or or, or names on now the new relationship that we develop? And so, my daughters were my daughters and. I was the first 24-year-old grandfather uh, in the United States. <laughs> no, not about the first, but... <laughs> well, I, I was one of the youngest grandfathers you were no in 24. The... I was 24 when we got married. You was 26. Uh, you don't know how old you are? Uh, whatever. You wasn't no 24. Uh, hater. <laughs> hater. And so... <laughs> and so, that's the dynamic that we dealt with because... When I talked about my daughters, I talked about them like they were my natural daughters, which they are my natural daughters. And so that's the way I talked about them. And so when people saw us interacting, they was like, wow. You know, and I would just always say, you know, I got good genes, you know, on my mom's side, everybody looked young. And so I inherited it, you know, when all along, you know, I married their mom. And so I, I married a family. I, I married some daughters. And so that's what that's what I had to deal with in that dynamic. But I never call them stepdaughters. Yeah, and so, no, so I true. encourage you guys that in this in this blended family, you, th- let there not be another step. Let that just be your child. Because once that's your child, once you take on their parent, then you take them on. And that's important because you that's how they feel wanted. You know, that's how they feel loved. That's how they feel appreciated. And so, you know, I, I wouldn't care if my daughter say, I'm their stepfather. You know, sometimes they sometimes they do, sometimes they don't, you know. But for me, that's not important because my response is my responsibility. And so right. my response to them is that they're my daughters and they know I love them just like they're my very own. And so, you know, that that's important. Um, also, don't be afraid or embarrassed to seek out help or advice or even counsel. Mm-hmm. I'm finding out so many people are held hostage because of decisions that they made. Yeah. Is some of you want to say about that one? No, you got that. You know, I, I, I just mm-hmm. just um the other day I talked with a, a young man and and there was, you know, he, he, he was so blessed, you know what I'm saying? I mean I talked to, to many different guys that have had the same, you know, situation. So let me make this clear. I talked to many guys since we've right. been doing this broadcast. You'd be surprised how many guys have, have texted me or have called me or have saw me and, you know, and said, man, 
I enjoyed the broadcast, but this is what I'm dealing with. You know what I'm saying? So this story right here isn't just a one story. It's a, it's, it's a many people story. But one in particular was just sharing with me how he wanted to do some things as it relates to relationship, but he felt hostage to a decision that he made. And so I encouraged him to let him know that, listen, man, God loves us in spite of, and that, you know, you have to trust God. And, and if God loves us, then, and if he forgave us, then we have to receive that forgiveness. And understand this, divorce is no different than cheating on your taxes. It's no different than lying. It's no different than a lot of things that we should do or we shouldn't do. And so don't be held hostage to that. Seek the forgiveness of God. Seek the redemption of God. Accept it. Receive it. And then move on. Yeah, because really when you get married, no one goes into a marriage wanting to or expecting to get divorced. Exactly. You know, sometimes things just happen and you got to just move on, you know? You, you, you got you to gotta move on beyond it. If, if you've already been divorced, you know, exactly. if you're divorced and you're trying to move past that. Exactly. And so, you know, we, we just thank you guys. It's been awesome. Well, you're gonna, um, um, oh, also, yeah, yeah I, I thank you, sweetheart. Uh, this is a sidebar, you know, saying as it relates to blended family. And, it, and it, this sidebar is for parents as well as children. And um, me, you guys, listen to John, Joel Osteen, and you you watch his broadcast, you listen to him on the radio. Uh, but what, what a lot of you don't know is Joel Osteen's father was divorced before he met Joel Osteen's mother. And he had to move beyond that condemnation. And I wanted to share that because just because you've had a divorce, just because you, you've gone down that road, that doesn't mean God's hand isn't still on you. That does not mean that God doesn't have a greater plan for your life. And we can clearly see that even after that divorce, how God just used John Osteen in such an awesome way that, that he's blessed millions and millions of people. So much so that his son now has taken on that mantle and he's taking that thing to a whole nother dimension. So not only is it important for you to understand that even though you going th that you're going through this or that you've gone through this, right. that God still has a plan and a purpose for your life. That's right. But not only does God still have a plan and purpose for your life, but also that plan and purpose extends now to your children. Because I'm pretty sure that John Osteen could, could never right. imagine that Joel Osteen was going to be used the way Joel is being used right. in 2017. And, and so we wanted to share that with you also too. Even in the Bible, there's a great example. David. David was a part of a blended family. And you, you never hear preachers talk about that. But do your research. Look at it. David didn't have the same mother as his brothers did. And so, consequently, David wasn't treated the same way as his brothers. Remember when the prophet came to, to Jesse, the prophet said, where your sons at? And so, David wasn't even present there. Mm -hmm. And this, this, this should encourage even the children of blended families to let you know that God has a plan and a purpose for your life in spite of the circumstances that you're currently in. Because when the prophet looked at the sons and the prophet said, hold on, this, this can't be it because I know my purpose for being here and I haven't saw the reason why I'm here yet. And then he said, is there anybody left? And then, the, then David father said, yeah, I got another son, David. He's out there. He's doing something, you know, but, but and he said, the prophet said, go get him. And as soon as the prophet laid eyes on her, he knew this was the one that God was anointing to be the next king. And so I want to encourage you, listen, love up on those children. Like, like all my, all my daughters, my son, they got godly titles in, as far as I'm concerned. There's a prophet, there's an evangelist, there's, there's, there's a, a minister, you know what I'm saying? And so each of them already has a, a plan and a purpose that God has spoken to me about, and it's my responsibility to make sure that I help nurture them in it. And so we thank you guys for um, tuning in to In the Blender with Madeline Hyman and Brandon Hyman. We pray that uh, this has been a blessing to you guys. Um, we pray, pray that we share some things that, that you can take and you can apply to your family and your life as it relates to the blended family, and that you be blessed. 
Um, anything you want to say as we close, we are? Uh, no, I think that's it. Just um, also remember that we'll be taking questions. Um, you can email your questions. And, and let me say this. Um, any questions that come in, when, when we do our broadcast, we will never mention names or anything like that. It'll be anonymous. You know, we'll just read out a question that we get via email and just give the answer. Um, because your question may be a hundred other people's question that they may not have wanted to ask. So you can send us emails to we are a blended family at gmail.com. Exactly. And like she said, your your question isn't just your question. There's never a question that a person asks and they're the only one that's going to benefit from the answer. And so remember, your question just isn't your question. We thank you all for tuning in. This has been an awesome pleasure uh, to share our life with you guys. And, and hopefully that this has been a blessing. Don't forget to share this broadcast uh, as we take this, as you can see, to the world behind us. Uh, and so we are so excited about this opportunity. God bless you all. We love you. And see you on next Tuesday. See you next week, guys.